Hi, welcome back to my channel. So today is Saturday and it's actually the start of a long weekend. Uh, it's actually quite warm and sunny today and a lot of people have gone away on short breaks because of course next week is half term as well so there's no school for the children. But for me, it's back to the office uh, because today I've actually got um, my monthly property mastermind uh, and today is actually a webinar well in fact they're, they're usually webinars um, except every quarter we have a live mastermind which is when we get together in person um, at, at a hotel in London so today's going to be a webinar and I thought I would just show you guys um, exactly how I run it um, a little bit behind the scenes, which I hope you'll find interesting. Okay, so I'll catch up with you later. Welcome to the webinar. You have entered as an organizer and may not speak to any other organizers or panelists on the line. When you are ready to begin the presentation, oh. press the start broadcast button on the go to webinar control panel to allow all attendees to hear you. This system will notify you once you begin the broadcast. Okay, it's two o'clock and I'm about to start the webinar now. So, rock and roll. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, Dragons. Welcome to May's Property Mastermind. I hope you're all well. And if you are joining me for the very first time today, a very warm welcome to you. Now, I can see here that uh, there's a lot of um, members from Malaysia who's joining us for the first time. So it's really fantastic to have you guys here. Uh, welcome, welcome, June, Alex, Evelyn, uh, Agnieszka, Joanne, Yavo, Yi, Vishal, Stanley. Wow, there's a lot of you here. And there's more and more people joining as I speak. So as always, let's start with a sound check. Um, if you can hear me loud and clear, then please type in the comments box below. Hi Flo. And if you can see my screen, then please type in the comments box. I see you Flo. Hi June, hi. Uh, so today's mastermind, as I've already mentioned previously on the Facebook group is the seven steps of repossession. Now, the reason why I've chosen this topic is because recently uh, a few of the Inner Circle students have brought deals to me where the property is either at risk of repossession or it's already been repossessed and it's been dealt with by the bank. So I think it's quite important to actually understand the process of repossession. How long does it take? What actually happens? And you know, what are some of the steps that um, one can take to avoid that? So if you do come across sellers in this kind of situation, then you will have a much clearer idea of how to help the seller and you know, whether it's, uh, you know, helping them to buy a little bit more time, getting um, legal, seeking legal advice, or if necessary, talking to the lender on behalf of the seller and just trying to negotiate some available options, okay? So, the first step would be the mortgage lender has to write to the homeowner about their mortgage arrears. So the only reason why a property would be at risk of being repossessed is when 
they've actually fallen into financial difficulties. The, the homeowner's fallen into financial difficulties and they're not able to keep up with their mortgage payments. So if there's arrears on the mortgage, then that is when it's at risk, okay? So normally, if they're even just one day or two days late paying the mortgage, the lender would always try to contact the homeowner either normally by phone, okay, but failing that, if they keep calling and the, the homeowner doesn't pick up, then they will send um, a written notice to, to inform the homeowner that the mortgage has fallen into arrears, can you please contact us immediately and explain, you know, what is the situation and, um, you know, they'll always do that and they'll always say, you know, if you've got any problems, then um, you, you must inform us straight away so that we can help you. So, you know, the lender will always try to, to find ways of helping the, the homeowner. And the lender must follow rules, okay? These are what is called pre-action protocol rules, and they're quite strict, okay? So if at any point the lender skips any of these rules, then the homeowner has a right to dispute and also file a complaint, an official complaint as well, okay? So this means that the lender must treat the homeowner fairly, okay? And you know, there are times when there are lenders who are very ruthless, okay? And I can think of one example is uh, by changing the mortgage to an interest only, it means that at the end of the term, right, whatever is owed on the amount, or on the balance, that will not change. Unlike a residential mortgage or a repayment mortgage where the amount will reduce month by month and over time it will completely clear so that the homeowner will own it outright. With an interest only mortgage, the balance does not change. So that means at the end of the mortgage term, the owner will have to find a way to either clear the balance in full or be in a position to sell the property so where there has to be enough equity in the property to allow the, the owner to sell the property, pay off the mortgage and make some money on top. Okay, so that's what's meant by changing the type of the mortgage. Take a payment holiday. Now what that means is, again, some um, mortgages, like the flexible mortgages, will allow the owner to take a payment holiday, meaning they can stop paying the mortgage from, you know, anything from one month to even up to a year, all right? But again, the homeowner must understand the consequence of that. So for instance, if the homeowner might be in a situation where they're currently unemployed, but they know that, but they've been offered a job and they are due to start um, maybe the, the, in a couple of months' time. So they can take a payment holiday and say, okay, I, I'm not working right now, but I can, so if I can have two months of not paying the mortgage, then when I start my new job and start earning again, I can start paying then. So what it means is the interest that's accrued during the holiday period will then be added um, onto the mortgage. So that means when the homeowner starts paying the, the mortgage payments again, the amount payable will be slightly higher than previous, all right? So it's really important that the homeowner understands that if they do take a payment holiday, they have to be able to afford the increased amount of the mortgage payments once they actually do start paying the investor a private company then again, you can provide a letter on headed paper to confirm that Mr. and Mrs. So-and-so um, are selling their property through me and I'm happy to confirm that a buyer has, has been, um, is in place and we are now going through the, the, the conveyancing process. So just something like that. And even better, um, 
you know, if you are actually the buyer yourself, then again, you know, you can uh, instruct your solicitor who's acting for you in the purchase to provide a letter so that, you know, so the letter actually comes from the solicitor to say, I am representing Mr. or Mrs. So-and-so in the purchase of this property, and we can confirm that we are in a position to proceed with the purchase. Um, here is the proof of deposit, etc. So something that comes from a legal representative, and this is usually sufficient, okay? If the homeowner isn't selling their home, but for example, they might be taking why the lender wants to repossess, but the court will also give the homeowner a chance to defend themselves by including a form, a defense form for them to complete and return. So the court will always provide an opportunity for the homeowner to to give their side of the story and you know hear their defense case okay tenant if there is one in place to buy some time and to do that the tenant has to cooperate okay so that is only possible if the homeowner as a landlord has a fairly good relationship with the tenant and the tenant is willing to help by giving a written statement Okay, now a written statement could be something like this. So here's an example. Court may at this point order a suspended position, uh, possession subject to conditions, as I've previously mentioned. Okay, that the homeowner must abide by the conditions in order to um, qualify for this suspended position if they then. break and or make a uh, file a complaint to the court all right because if the lender does that then what that means is the interest on the mortgage is continuing to build up for the homeowner so that would be very very unfair for the owner all right so the lender has a duty also to sell at best possible price they can't just get rid of you know the the property and sell it at a ridiculously low price reason being is because the owner has to cover the shortfall. So if there are any profit ways, my quote of the month, this is a lovely one. If you hear a voice within you say, you cannot paint, then by all means paint. And that voice will be silenced. And this is a lovely quote from Vincent van Gogh, one of my all time favorite artists. And I think it's wonderful because there's always that little voice inside of you telling you that you can't do something. But that is the very reason why you have to slap that little voice out of you and do it. Get on with it and try because there is nothing worse than looking back and wishing that you had given something a, a try or a go. Um, at the end of the day, what is the worst that can happen? You know, I mean, and thank you again for joining me. Take care. Until next time. Bye-bye. Right, so uh, just finished the webinar, and I think it went pretty well. Um, I tried to make it as informative as possible, so I hope my uh, students actually found it useful. Uh, so now I have to convert the, the recording, because I always record the webinars, and uh, so now I have to convert it to an MP4, and then upload it onto our online platform so that they can have access to to the recording and watch back on it in their own time and for those who weren't able to attend the the webinar today uh, they'll be able to to catch up with it as well so i'm really glad i covered this topic today because for me it's it's very important and as a property investor i think you know a lot of the times we will come across homeowners in very difficult situations and if they are at risk of repossession um, and you are not familiar with the process then you won't be able to help um, the homeowner effectively so for me it is very important so I hope you know all my mentees actually learned something today as well right it's it's pretty late now um, and but it's still quite uh, sunny and 
warm out there so I think I'm going to uh, just finish off here quickly and then uh, go home to my boys and uh, make the most of whatever's left of today um, maybe take them cycling <laughs> I don't know but uh, I think I'm gonna drink some tea as well because uh, my, my voice is getting a little bit hoarse now I've, I've been talking non-stop but uh, yeah thank you so much for watching this video I hope you enjoyed it and, and also found it useful if you're new to my channel please subscribe if you want to see what else I get up to as well and if you like this video then please give it a thumbs up so until next time take care and wherever you are whatever you're doing I hope you're having a great day and above all keep smiling <laughs> bye bye